Okay, now we'll start our class, right? So, so this is Akshara Brahma Yoga, attaining the Supreme, right? So this is chapter A. So let us pay obeisance to Sri Radha Govinda. Agnana Timiranda Sya Nanaka Shalakaya Chakshumitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapita Mena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Rupa Kada Mayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Pada Kamalam Sri Guru Vaishnam Sha Sri Rupam Sagarajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vittam Tam Sa Jeevam Sadvaitam, Savadotam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna Padan, Sahagana Lalita, Sri Vishakana Vittam Star, E Krishna Karuna Sindo, Dina Bando Jagat Pate, Gopesha, Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namos Tute, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari, Vishabana Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari Pri. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamiti Namane, Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine, Nir Vishesha Shunyavadi, Pascha Desha Tarine, Jayo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabho Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadara, Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we we'll go to our class today after the Mangla. So let us have a short recap of what we did yesterday, right? So yesterday was the beginning of our Bhakti Yoga. Here, process of Bhakti, Krishna is talking about it. So we started with the knowledge about Krishna. He says, nobody knows about him well because even if they have achieved um, perfection but still out of many thousands and things very, very few will attain full knowledge about him so he's explaining about this uh, about himself if we want to know about anybody we should ask them only they individually can tell us about right so if you want to know about the supreme lord only he can tell us about himself about how great he is and what is and so he is explaining in this chapter about his two energies. One is the material energy through which, which we are seeing and which we are, we are in this world, cosmic manifestation. And then is superior, superior energy, that is the spiritual sky where he lives. Okay, that is eternal, whereas this material and cosmic manifestation is temporary and it gets annihilated and created and is maintained by Lord Krishna. So then uh, through his energies, we can understand, him. we can remember him. If we can't understand uh, the transcendentals, at least through the energy, what is happening, how the sunshine is there and the uh, sunlight and through the water, taste in the water, then in the taste and the smell of the earth, everything, everything which we see here, the beauty, the whole thing of appearances, through that we can understand, remember there's some, some controller some supreme personality of God. So he says if you understand this and it is difficult to cross this material world. So if you anyone who surrenders to him he is able to cross this uh, material ocean. Ocean of what is that cycle of birth and death. Now comes to the question of surrender. So he, then he explained of the four kinds of people who don't surrender to him and four kinds of people who surrender to him. Right. So we saw that and then he talked about demigod worship. And demigod worship is people who um, worship the uh, devatas and things for certain benefits. They, according to the Vedic uh, rituals, they perform and they try to get the material benefits. And uh, it's not, uh, uh, Krishna doesn't say no or doesn't say thing. Only thing he says, this uh, type of surrendering is misplaced. Okay, because why it's misplaced is whatever benefits we get from them, 
it's all temporary and it's very limited because once we change our body, once we transmigrate to another body, all the benefits we have got is left. And you might even go to their planets, higher planets, but once our pious uh, credit gets over, we have to come back to the Boloka again to start. So there is no escapism from the cycle of birth and death. But if you worship the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then we go to his abode from where we need not come back. And the impersonalism people, they think they are to only merge into the Brahma Jyoti and they don't believe in the, uh, the form. So to them, the Lord covers himself by Yoga Maya. So they can't, foolish people cannot understand him. And then why we are caught into this is because of a delusion, the moha, maya is the illusion. And we are ichadvesha, that is we are attached, we have our desire and our hatred. So these are things which are, we desire to be in this world and we don't want to, we hate the supreme law's uh, supremacy. So because of that, we are caught into in this illusion, maya energy. So it is like, and how only through bhakti we can go back to him. So he, in the finally he ends up with that. So now Krishna, so this was the, about the devotional service, how through that we can go back to him, Krishna has explained here. Then, then the question starts by Arjuna. There are some eight questions, that is actually some spiritual con concepts, you want more clarification. So in the, it starts off with that and then there in the last uh, chapter, you would have, Krishna would have ended saying that people who understand this principle of him, that he is the Maheshwara, he is the controller, he is the creator and everything, then they will remember him in the at the time of death. So he mentions that at the time of death. Even in chapter 2 also he mentions uh, the people who are Stira Muni, who was very determined and to be in this part, yeah, will remember him at the time of death. Then again, now in chapter seven, in that long clothing, he remember he talks about time of death. That is about the final law. So then now all this only four slokas, he finishes off all the questions. I mean, the first two slokas will be Arjuna's questions, doubts. And then about uh, seven out of eight, he will complete it into verses third and fourth. But in all the verses, other uh, among the 24 verses, he talks about how to remember him at the time of death. So there he explains more of it. So this whole chapter is about our final law, how we have to remember him at the thing. Okay. So supremacy in the thing, we can see that. So Arjuna inquired, Oh my Lord, oh Supreme Person, what is Brahman? What is self? What are fruitive activities? What is this material manifestation? And what are the demigods? Please explain this to me. So if you have some doubts, you know, you should always clarify it. If you otherwise, if you do, if you have it in your mind, it will be like, you know, festering yourself and you can never get a peace of mind. Then he continues to say, how does this Lord of Sacrifice live in the body and which part does he live? Oh, Mother Sudhana, and how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? So he's worried, like, you know, devotees now at the time of death, we may not be, our body may not be in the proper condition. We may not have, I mean, we might have been diseased or our, uh, so many other functions, our senses may not be functioning. Then how can we remember? It will be very difficult. So that is a, another worry for Arjuna. So he's asking that. So why this came in the last verse, if you want to look, they Krishna has said, Jara Marana Mokshaya, Ma Mashritya Yatyanti, Te Brahma Tad Vidyu Krishna, Adhyatmaha Karma Chakshu. So here you now the Brahma, Adhyatma, Sadi Bhuta, Adi Daivam, he talks about demigods, then Sadi Agna, who is the uh, enjoyer of the Yagnas, and Prayana Kale Apichana. So we do Yukta Chetasa. So this is what was there in the 28th and uh, 29th and 30th verse in chapter 7. So now Krishna is answering. What is Brahman? Brahman is nothing but our jiva that is living ent entity, which is not eternal, eternal. Adhyatma is that nature of jiva is eternal nature we have and we are conditioned in this material world. And about karma. See, this is the one, our activities, our fruitive activities, what we do, that is what will 
lead to the material body. As I said earlier, no, that because of our past karma, no, we have taken this body today and we are in that particular situation with a particular family, in a particular country, and we have that particular nature, a mentality which we are born. And people, you not one, all are in you. Nobody is same because they all have the different natures, right? So then, and wow, how we perform this life, how do we act this life, that will, uh, actions will lead to our next body we'll take, transmigration. So that is all about karma and we spent about six chapters on karma yoga, right? Then again he asked, because this is something is always clarity should be there, you know, because we are conditioned, we are always in this material world, we forget it. Then adibhuta, material manifestation. Then that is the material nature, Prithvi. Then Adi Daiva is the supreme god, universal form which includes all the demigods. Then Adi Agna is the Paramatma who is there in every living, living entity. And where does he reside? He is, resides in the heart of all. He is the one. And we think no one knows whatever we are doing. It is not true because he is there in our body. He knows our past. He knows our present. And also he knows the future because how we can know the future is the way we think and where we desire and how we perform our activities in this world, he can really predict how we are going to be in the future. Then how to remember Krishna at the time of death? Then he says, practice remembers throughout the life. Then only you can remember him even at the time of death. So, and he is elaborating on this point more. The Supreme Lord said, the indestructible transcendental living entity is called Brahman and his eternal nature is called self. Action pertaining to the development of these material bodies is called karma or the free to activities. How we get these bodies is due to our fructive activities. So as I said, no, we take the, there are four st six stages. We are born, then we grow, then we, we come to the boyhood, then to youth, then after that we maintain, then we, um, what is, we have, birth, we have children and all that, then slowly the body decays and we get to the death. So these are our four uh, problems that all the uh, living entities have is birth, death, old age and diseases. And no one, no scientist can escape from them. And I found a problem for this even now. So, and the physical nature is known to be endlessly mutable. The universe is uh, the cosmic form of the Lord. And I'm that Lord represented the super soul dwelling in the heart of every human embodied being, okay? Now he ta talks about uh, Antakale. Antakale cha maam eva smaranam mukta kale varam ya prayati sam atmad bhavam yati nashti atra samshaya. So, hati is now samshaya. Now, he says, this is quite important first, who were at the time of death, quits his body, remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. Of this, there is no doubt. See, he is very clear in his uh, instruction. See, he says there is, you should not doubt at all. There is no doubt that if you remember me uh, alone at the time of death, you surely attain my nature. My nature is what? His nature is spiritual, transcendental. So we will go back to his about transcendental, more spiritual nature. So we will be relieved from this uh, material body, my brother, material uh, connection. So he says, you will get liberated. So there is no doubt. It's a atra samshaya. See, there, where everything, even the last chapter, he said, you surrendered to me, the who, who was surrendered to me can easily cross this ocean of their birth and death. Again, now he's saying, you remember me, even when if you remember me at the time of death, the final lover is there. And people might think, okay, only at the time of death, no. Then I will do whatever I want now and think. Do you think you will be able to remember them? You may not because we don't know when our time of final hour is and in what situation we will be, how our body will be, is a big question mark, isn't it? So here Krishna's um, instruction is very clear. If you remember me at once, uh, there is no doubt. So when he himself is telling, don't doubt it, you will surely come back to it. And here we have Bhishma Dev, who was on the bed of arrows, and he was waiting for the uh, Yudhishthira to become the Maharaja. And then 
at the last night he wanted he was his only wish was to see krishna so krishna and the pandavas all come to pay obeisance to him and then uh, udhishthira maharaj will ask him actually he be so remorseful he didn't want to take up the kingdom then he says no and he gives him lot of advice the grandfather to him and he says you are the right person and you should do take up the kingdom it's not for yourself it is for the religion you have to do it and it is the order of the lord so you have to do your duty and then after telling him how a raja and what is his duties as a king then the last he will give a beautiful prayer you know prayer that is he will be seeing krishna and um, prays to him and is known as uh, bishma stuti it's a very beautiful prayer it is in the shrimad bhagavatam then uh, saying uh, reciting those uh, prayers to him he leaves his body okay he that is he is a great mahajan all right so that's how he leaves and he had an ichcha benediction from his father that he can leave his body at any time and at his own free will okay so he does that so he says uh, krishna says who remembers me at the time of death they can attain my nature so then so them bhava that is what is it bhava is a mood cultivated in their life depends on his sadhana isn't it unless we do a sadhana well unless we keep remembering and chanting hari krishna mantra that name will be there on our tongue you know keeps on thing so we will it's easy to remember at the final hour also then this is a beautiful thing this is taken from mahabharat i think all of you know ahane ha ahane ahane bhutani gacchantya yamalaya sheshesha stavaram ichanti kim aschary matha par so this is the um, there the pandavas uh, five brothers no so for yudhishthira will be uh, waiting for them to bring water but when it does, doesn't come all of them so he goes in search of them and he finds them all unconscious near a lake then he think there must be something here which has happened for them to be unconscious so then he gets a, a voice from the yaksha she asking him this question um, that is what is the most um, wonderful thing in this world so then uh, this trust says hundreds and thousands of living entities meet death at every moment but a foolish living being nonetheless thinks himself deathless and does not prepare for death this is the most wonderful thing in this world so actually we think uh, looking thinking about death is inauspicious and so we want to avoid that uh, topic of death but so he says but everyone who has a stake in a birth will die some day or the other so that is the only thing which happens with 100% probability okay and everyone every living entity whether it's a fish or a plant or a animal or the human being all of them have to die one day or the other so that is the can come at any time and how we define old it means we are going closer and closer to the death every day as it passes by right so then krishna continues to say yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tyajati anti kalevaram tam tam evati kaunteya sada tad bhava bhaviti so he talked about bhava no so he is explaining how whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body that state he will attain without fear so whichever state we are in at that point whatever the mentality we have and that mentality will be depending on how throughout our life of course and then that thing will be so here whom we see it was a great personality bharat maharaj because he was i told you know he had a slip and then from his spiritual life he was all the time thinking about the deer instead of doing his sadhana then uh, one day when he goes in search of uh, the deer he falls down into a pit and uh, loses his life that time so in the next birth he uh, takes the life of a deer so we saw this i explained there no the few, few chapters earlier that he will learn stuff he had gone to the forest to uh, do some spiritual uh, uh, thing duties i mean uh, path only to uh, do his yoga and to for uh, tapas thinking of the lord and he would have left his kingdom family and everything but one day when he sees a baby deer in trouble he takes care of it 
and slowly he forgets his um, practice, practice which he has to come to do that. And he will be taking care of the deer. And uh, finally, when the deer is missing, he goes in search of it and meets his death. But he gets the uh, life of a deer at that time because he was remembering about the deer all the time instead of his uh, the Supreme Lord. But one thing Krishna was very merciful because it was only at this stage when he had uh, made a slip. But during the other days, no, other during his uh, young days and all that, he was a very great duty uh, devotee and he was a great king also doing his prescribed duties. Only at that stage, at the, almost at the perfection stage, he slipped. So because of that, merciful, he, when he was in a dear form also, he could remember his past. So he was always in the ashram amongst the stages. And then he'll take one more birth and then only he leaves his body, gets his liberation. As Jarabhata, it's given in Srimad Bhagavat. So we saw that what Bhava we get and what the nature we'll get in the next birth. Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmara yudhyacha maya atitta mano Maam evasyas asamshaya. So, what does Krishna say here? Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna. At the same time, carry out the prescribed duties of fighting with your activities then dedicated to me. Okay? And uh, mind and intelligence fixed on me. You will attain me without doubt. Again, he stresses without asana, asamshaya. So he says, he doesn't tell Arjuna, you renounce and go to the forest or anything. He's telling, you do your duty, thing, but you dedicate your activities to me and your mind and interest should be fixed up. That means you should be all the time absorbed in him and continue to do your duty. So we have to do our work in this world. And how to do it? We have talked about no? Sanketa and our sadhanas. And we have to do our duty and keep uh, uh, our Krishna consciousness in us so that we will be able to remember and we can go back to him without doubt. He says, you will attain me without doubt. They don't kind of thing. So here we see Ma Pralad, you know, when he was in the Gurukul, he was telling his friends and all, why are you wasting time in um, playing and all that? You should devote your time in Krishna consciousness. And he is teaching them and Narayana, how to Narayana Stuti and telling them how the devotional work to be, Vishnu Sarva, how to remember Krishna. So now he's telling us how to remember him doing our duty. Okay. Then, Abhyasa Yoga Uttena Chetasa Nanya Ghamina Paramam Purusham Divyam Eti Pratyar Chinta. So here, he who meditates on the Supreme Person of the Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undiv undeviated from the path, he is sure to reach me. So now we know how to reach him. We have to meditate on him. So we have to meditate on the Lord. And here is the story of Ajamela. I think this uh, many, I don't know if you all know about it before. He was a good Brahmana, okay? And um, he was quite young. And one day when he has gone to the forest to collect some flowers and some you know, barks and all that, his father would have sent him. That time he sees a couple in a, a passionate embrace. So then he becomes, um, his mind gets agitated by seeing that. He say, no, I'll just see for a second. But when he comes back home, he's all the time thinking about it. And finally, what does he get uh, uh, fallen into that? He brings the um, prostrate home and he, um, he doesn't care for his parents nor to his wife and all that. And he will be engaged in all sorts of uh, um, sinful actions. Okay. And even at the age of uh, 88, he had a son of two years old. Son. So in the last um, time, final hour, he sees a lot of Yamadutas coming. You know, you could see them. Then he gets um, terrified, wondering who these people are. Then he will. Uh, shout, uh, he will call out for his son. That is, it was his Narayana. Okay, hearing Narayana, the honest thing, no, he'll be uh, calling out for Narayana, Narayana. That time, the Vishnu Dutas also will come. So, in Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a big uh, argument between the Vishnu Dutas and the 
Yamadutas. They say he has done so much of sin and things. How you can say we have to redeem him and he can go? He has to come back to the hellish planets. But they say, no, he has remembered the Lord, though it was not intentional, but still the Narayana has got a lot of power in it. So he has remembered him. So you have to relieve him. You can't take him there. All this dialogue and everything, he, he gets to see that. Then he feels so bad and so bad. Then he then they leave away. The Yamadutas go away. Then Vishnu Dutas will give him a second chance. So this is a second chance Ajmela gets. So he walks away from the house, goes straight to the Haridwar, and then does the lot of penance. And then later the he goes back to Vaikuntha. In fact, when I heard this story, you know, I, I actually I didn't know all these details before. Because when we were younger and all that, that time they were saying, you know, if you um, chant the name of Narayana at the last minute, you can go back. I used to wonder how it could be done, you know. And only when I heard about this, that finally he understands this, that the name of the Lord, you know, the, there is a potential in this the name of the Lord, that even a person, even if he has done a lot of sins, he is getting uh, forgiveness by the Lord. But he is given a second chance. That is, he is not straight away goes to Vaikuntha, but he, he takes the second chance, the opportunity given to him to reform himself. So he goes to Haridwar, gets himself reformed, and he spends his other birth and days in the Lord, remembering the Lord. So that's how after his penance, <clears throat> thing, the, he goes back to, he gets liberated. So it is not just uh, given him straight away, but he was given a chance, second chance. Okay. So finally, Krishna says how we should remember him, meditate on. So we should meditate on the Supreme Lord because he knows everything. He is the oldest. He is the origin, isn't it? And he's a controller, smaller than the smallest as well as the bigger thing. You can't con conceive, think about his opulences. He is the maintainer of everything. And is beyond all material conception. So this is very important. It is inconceivable. Because we are thinking from our blunt senses. We can't uh, perceive so easily. We actually, we can't, though we see the sun so far up, can we see its characteristics and all that? It's not easy to understand that. Even a small worm and how they are, it's very difficult to understand. It is beyond us. And he is there in everything. He is luminous like the sun and is transcendental and is beyond their nature. Because of that, we have to meditate on him as a person. He tells us, he's, here he clearly says he is a person and not, but he has a body which is transcendental, not like our body. Okay, so we know how to remember him, how to meditate him and thing. And we also have Brahma, Lord Brahma all the time in meditation on the Lord. Supreme Lord, even Shiva also. Okay. And now he continues to say, Maam Yukyetya Punar Janma Dukkalya Mashashvatam Atnapnoti Mahatmanaha Samshidi Paramam Gathaha. After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in the ocean never return to this temporary world. So Dukkalya Mashashvatam. So this is a temporary world and Ashashvatman is temporary, which is full of miseries because it's Dukkha land. So it's full of miseries because they have attained the highest spirit. Who? The people, the great souls who are all the time in devotion. Once if you do devotional service, only then you can come out of it. You might think this is uh, auspicious, that is inauspicious and all that. But here Krishna says everything is inauspicious. There's nothing auspicious in this world. Everything is full of miseries. And no one is escaping from it. And we are all the time in anxiety. So because they are attained. So with only through devotional service, you can attain me. So it is very clear. So his instructions are very clear and there's no ambiguity. From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery. Because why it's misery? They're because there and all that higher planets or lower planets, you have repeated birth and death cycle. So you can't escape from that. Only if you go back to his abode, you can you can never take birth again. So this material world is temporary, whereas spiritual world is eternal. Okay. 
So, and by another thing what happens is we transmigrate from uh, one body to the other. That is one kind of annihilation. But when Brahma's day is uh, over, by human question, thousand ages taken together is duration of Brahma's one day. And such also is duration of smite. Okay. When Brahma's day is manifested, this multitude of living entities comes into being. But at the arrival of the Brahma's night, they are all annihilated. That means we all go back into the uh, Mahavishnu's Garbha. Okay? And when the night is over and the, again the day of Brahma comes, then again again the day comes and this host of beings is active. And again the night falls. So we have second type of annihilation is when Brahma's day and the, during the night. But when Brahma's life is over, again there will be a pralaya. That means again we go back to Mahavishnu. So, that, and when we come back to the world, we come back with the whatever mentality we had, you know, with our karma and all that, that, that um, uh, credit or whatever that balance, you know, material balance, our karmic balance will be there. And with that only we will come back. Okay. It's not that we will become uh, clear and all that, nothing. And it go back and again. So, only thing is we have to. Uh, take to the instructions of the Lord and try to go back to him. So he says in 20, yet there is another nature which is eternal and is transcendental to the manifested and manifested matter. It is supreme and is never annihilated. So this is spiritual sky or spiritual abode is never annihilated. So this is how our, uh, I mean, our cosmic lo universe looks. There are a lot of globes here. Okay, you can see here. That is our so many, and this one globe is where we are, and somewhere here is a bullock. I will uh, uh, share this chart with you all, PDF, in the WhatsApp group. You can see more clearly. And it is taken from the, and the references from where they have drawn this thing is taken from Brahma Samhita, and then all the references are given on the side. You can see it's known as Goloka chart. And this is the abode of the Lord Krishna, okay? And then we have Lord of Vaikuntas. And this is the abode of Lord Shiva, Kailasha. Then you have, this is Devi Dhamma. What is by right? Durga Devi, where we are. And here we have the Lord Vishnu, stand from where all the universes are getting manifested. And Garbhoda Extra Vishnu, he enters another expansion of the Lord. We like go into each globe. And then Brahma comes out. And there is in each globe, there's a Brahma. It could, here you could, we have four-headed Brahma. In other universes, you can have matter B, six-headed or ten-headed, whatever it is, the Brahmas are there. And they are given the task of creating the other planets and to the living entities. Okay, They are the secondary creation. And here we have all the higher planets and the lower planets. So this sun, I will share this thing. You can see it more clearly. Okay. And how we can, by chanting only, we can go back to that law. Otherwise, if you keep going up and down, it will be only coming back to the Goloka. Okay. And then, and we, and in the Goloka, you can have any relationship with the Lord. It could be any of the five reasons. Either you can be a friend, or you can be a tree, or you can be a cow, or you can be a mother, or you can be a friend, or a servant. So any of these reasons we will have our own Swarupa. So, in Mukunda Mala Sutra, he says, um, it's a very beautiful uh, sloka by the King Kulakshetra. He says, uh, please take me now itself because at the time, final hour, and my, my throat may become constricted by the action of the body and things, and I will never be able to remember you. Please take me when I still hail and heart. It's a beautiful prayer he gives there. So finally, what Krishna says, Vedeshu Ekneshu Tapashu Chaiva, Daneshu Et Punya Alam Pradishta, Atyati Tat Sarvam Idam Viditva, Yogi Param Stanam Upaiti Chat. So one who accepts the path of devotional service, that is, you want to perform, um, meditate on the Lord and do the thing, is not bereft of the results derived from studying the Vedas, performing austeric sacrifice, giving charity philosophical and fruitive activities. At the end, he reaches the Supreme Board. So he comes back to me. So it's the only way to go back to his Lord, the Lord. That is part of devotional service. 
And here in the Vedas, they have a lot of various steps. You have to take up the Brahmachari, then take up Grastha, then you do Vanaprastha, then Sanyasi. So there is given in Vedas how step by step you can go. And it's there, not laid out. But it's a long time and you can always get stuck in any one of the ashramas, right? So, but if you take the Krishna consciousness, then it surpasses all these rituals and orders. You can straight away connect to the Bhakti Yoga. Because ultimately, even Vedas say that the ultimate thing is to go back to the Lord. But we might get caught in between. Okay. So instead, if you straight away do Krishna conscious, it surpasses all rituals and orders. So this is what was underlining thing in this particular chapter. How we, the final art, if you learn, remember Krishna, meditate him on him. And he says, without doubt, there's no doubt about it. So we saw the concepts which Arjuna asked and then about the final art. So you see about 24 verses was all on the remembering Krishna at the time of death. So and we talked again, he talks about the material world and um, spiritual world. He compares it and states that you get annihilated. Think there, you know, escape from cycle of birth and death. Whereas in spiritual world, it's full of bliss and uh, you don't have to come back to the Buloka. And he, and he stresses on pure bhakti. Only through bhakti you can attain him. Okay. So material world is nothing but a Dukkhalaya. It's not a Sukhalaya. And we have to remember Lord at the time of death. And pure devotion, bhakti is the only way to achieve him. So Prabhupada says, if you have any doubts, are natural, which should come. But certain things can increase our faith. So what is that? By knowledge, by knowing about the person. So it increases our faith in devotion. So devotional thing is very difficult to surrender. I mean, to have to be devoted to a person. Unless we understand him and get the knowledge of him, then only we can be, uh, take this path of devotion. Then association of others is also important. It's like, you know, so recently, you know, there was um, one of our um, senior devotees, you know, who were uh, telling us about this association. How he says is he gave a nice analogy. I liked it very much. He said, you have a wood, so piece of wood. And in the wood, we know you can set fire to it, right? There's a fire energy is there inside the wood. But uh, how do you light the fire? You have to bring another uh, um, match, you know, a matchbox. You, know, you have to light the fire and bring it close to it. When you bring the fire to close to it, only then the wood will catch fire, isn't it? So that means the lighting fire is the devotee. Unless you get uh, um, closer to a devotee, only then you will get this devotion. Think that, um, understand this part of devotion. Otherwise, you'll be just like a wood, piece of wood, without in ignorance. So association, this is what we mean by association. Only by bringing the fire from outside and uh, closer to the piece of wood, then it gets ignited. So by associating with the devotees, we can get to know about this spiritual knowledge. We can be in that. So that is how he explains and experience. And, and another thing is you have to experience yourself. See, if I keep telling you to chant Hare Krishna mantra, I know what is it happening because I, I am practicing it. Because I'm practicing it and I can see its effect on me. But for you to know, even if I tell you in so many words, it won't be helpful unless you practice it, unless you try it out. Then only you'll get the experience. So these are the things, once you do that, only then all these doubts which we have, apprehensions, why we have to think about the Lord Krishna, why not others, that will come only by slowly being getting trying to understand this knowledge and try to be in association of pure devotees and excellent. This is what happened before in with Prabhupada's case. The, all those hippies and all that, they were all not knowing, they were all ignorant, okay? And they were in part of. So only when they got associated with the Prabhupada, that's how they could get that bhakti into them. That spark of bhakti was lit in their minds, into their hearts by the associating with Prabhupada. And that's how they could turn their life 
and they could experience the things they could become the true follower right so pancha kalpatru abhyascha kripa sindhu ave evascha patitam nam pavane bo vaishnave bo namo namaha hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare chant and be happy hare krishna so this is a quite a tough subject and it's 